Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Botsman. I teach Japanese history here at Yale. Um, and it is an incredible privilege today to be able to welcome to campus Ms. Toshiko Tanaka and her daughter, Ms. Reiko Tashiro. In addition to thanking them both for being here and for making the long, exhausting journey <laughs> from Japan to the East Coast, I do also want to express my uh, deep gratitude to uh, Anthony Shimamoto from the University of Connecticut School of Law uh, and Takeshi Watanabe from Wesleyan University for uh, arranging their visit and opening up this extraordinary opportunity to us here at Yale. As I'm sure you all know, Tanaka-san brings today a message of the greatest importance, one that it's hard to believe anyone in the world after 1945 could ever forget. And yet, according to the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists, we now live in a time of unprecedented danger, with the so-called doomsday clock set at just 90 seconds to midnight, the closest we've ever been, in other words, to true global catastrophe. And of course, all over the world, we've seen the continued proliferation of nuclear weapons. As those of you who attended last week's John W. Hall lecture by the eminent political scientist Richard Samuels from MIT know, today, even in Japan, the only country in the world to have experienced the horrors of a nuclear attack, politicians are openly discussing the acquisition of nuclear weapons in order, they say, to counter the threats of North Korea and China. Here at Yale, I'm glad to say that there have been those over the years who have written and spoken about the horrors that befell the people of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August 1945. To give just two prominent examples, John Hersey, who served as head of Pearson College from 1965 to 1970 and taught writing here for almost 18 years may have done more than any other American to make ordinary people in this country aware of the horrors of the nuclear bombings with his landmark 1946 essay, Hiroshima. 50 years later, in 1996, John Treat, only recently retired from the uh, East Asian Languages and Literatures Department, published his important book, Writing Ground Zero, Japanese Literature and the Atomic Bomb. It's so important that we have access to works like these that describe on the page what happened. But it's one thing to be able to read about the horror. It is quite another to be able to hear directly from someone who lived through it. In this regard, I can only say again what a truly special privilege it is for us to have Tanaka Toshiko-san here with us today. Please join with me now in extending her the very warmest possible welcome. First of all, my mother and I would really thank you for having us here today. We would especially like to extend our sincere gratitude um, to the people and organizations who made this event possible. My name is Reiko Tashiro. I'm from Japan. I'm a second generation Hibakusha, or a A-bomb survivor. Since I was a child, I have believed that nuclear weapons cannot coexist with humanity. My mother once told me that when I was born, the first thing my father had to do was count my fingers and toes to make sure that I had no birth defect. In those days, even though people survived themselves, they had to worry about radiation damage to their children. Today, I will first give a brief overview of the damage caused by the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. Then my mother, Toshiko, will tell you her story and we will have a question and answer session afterward. During the talk, we would like to share some of the photos of Toshiko's enamel mural works, which she has created for over 50 years, putting her wishes for peace. 
we would like to give you a prior warning. Some of the pictures and stories being shared might cause some of you discomfort, and you might decide whether you would prefer to avoid them. On August 6, 1945, at 8.15 a.m., the atomic bomb was dropped targeting a bridge at the center of Hiroshima City. The bomb exploded 2,000 feet above the ground, releasing intense heat, blast, and radiation. Near the hypocenter, the blast is believed to have had a speed of about 1,000 feet per second. Buildings, which were mostly made of wood at the time, collapsed over a wide area. People were blown away by the tremendous blast. At the moment of explosion, the temperature near the center was believed to be between 5,400 and 7,200 Fahrenheit. This is a picture of stone steps at the entrance of a bank. The intense heat turned the steps whitish, and the stone under the person sitting there waiting for the bank to open remained dark. This tricycle belonged to a three-year-old boy, Shinichi Tetsutani, who died in the attack while he was playing on his favorite toy, his tricycle. Considering the iron, melt at 2700 Fahrenheit, people's skin who were outside near the hypocenter must have been chuckled instantly. The atomic bomb differs from other bombs because it emits radiation, which causes cellular and genetic abnormalities. The vast majority of people exposed to radiation within 0.6 miles died even if they were unharmed. Also, many people are believed to be damaged by exposure to residual radiation from the fallout, so-called deadly ash, and rain mixed with radioactive materials, so-called black rain. Radiation can cause various long-term diseases, such as leukemia, thyroid cancer, breast cancer, and colorectal cancer. Even now, it's affecting many people. Although the exact number is still unknown, 140,000 people in Hiroshima and over 70,000 people in Nagasaki are estimated have died by the end of the year. On July 2017, a global agreement on, to ban nuclear weapons, known as the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, or TPNW, was adopted at the United Nations, which entered into force on January 22, 2021. Before the treaty's adoption, nuclear weapons were the only weapons of mass destruction, not subject to a comprehensive ban, despite their humanitarian and environmental consequences. It prohibits nations from developing, testing, producing, manufacturing, transferring, processing, stockpiling, using, or threatening to use nuclear weapons, or allowing nuclear weapons to be stationed on their territory. It also prohibits them from assisting, encouraging, or inducing anyone to engage in any of these activities. The Nobel Prize, Peace Prize 2017 was awarded to the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons, or ICANN, for its work to draw attention to the catastrophic humanitarian consequences of any use of nuclear weapons, or for its groundbreaking efforts to achieve a treaty-based prohibition of such weapons. There are now 13,000 nuclear warheads in the world, which is enough to wipe out every living thing on the planet multiple times over. More than 90% of them belong to the United States and Russia. 
My mother and I are here to speak to you, not because we want you to make you feel guilty or sorry, but because we hope that we can work together to create a more peaceful world. The average age of Hiroshima, Hibakusha in Hiroshima, is now over 84 years old. My mother is also 84. In the near future, we will not be able to hear directly from them. So let's invite Toshiko to share her story. Hello, my name is Toshiko Tanaka. I survived the atomic bombing in Hiroshima. Hibakusha is how we call all the survivors in Japanese. I've been creating Inamo mural artwork for over 50 years. It wasn't easy for me to talk about, but I'm going to tell you today. I tried not to remember what had happened in Hiroshima on August 6th, 1945. I thought people would not understand me. I was not able to talk to anybody about my personal experience of the atomic bombing, not even to my own family. I started to open up and share this horrible this experience when I turned 70. It is a miracle for me to be able to tell you my story today. Hopefully, we are all here to stop something like this from ever happening again. Originally, my family lived only 500 meters, 540 yards from Grand Zero, where the bomb hit. But just one week before the atomic bombing, we moved 2.3 kilometers away, 1.4 miles away from Grand Zero. Because of this, I am alive today. Even though I was burned and exposed to radiation. When I was just six years old, the gigantic mushroom cloud was right above me. At 8.15 a.m., I was on my way to school. Somebody shouted, B-29, Bama. I looked up and saw a tremendous flash. It was like a million lights. Everything went white. I couldn't see. I covered my face with my right arm. Heat burned my head, my neck, and my right arm. Then suddenly, everything went dark, like night time. Hot sand dust blew up. It covered the sun. I couldn't see, but the dust cloud was like a giant mushroom. My mouth was full of dust. What was happening? What should I do? I can't forget that terrible, crunchy sand taste. Soon, my burnt arm began to swell. The pain was incredible. I cried all the way home, but our house was very damaged when I got there. Even though my mother was alive, she could not recognize me. My hair was burnt. I was covered in ash. My clothes were destroyed. That night, I was close to death. Many doctors were dead. There were no hospitals left. Survival depended on how strong you were and how lucky. My younger sister had bad head wounds. My father was away in the army. Our roof was mostly gone, but suddenly I looked up and saw a small patch of blue sky. Although I was in pain, I thought, this is so beautiful. That blue sky stayed with me. It had given me the will to live. As if the heavens said, don't worry, there will be a tomorrow. This is why I continue to live life positively, even through many hardships. 
It took only one second for a single bomb to destroy the city of Hiroshima and 140,000 lives. And another bomb to kill 70,000 more in Nagasaki. All my classmates were killed. My young aunt left home that morning and never came back. Her body was never found. Every image of that terrible day remains. My generation will be the last to tell you about this event as a direct witnesses. This is what I saw. After I got home that day, I saw a large crowd of dying people. They were walking in procession near my house. Some were orphans. Men, women, and children alike were almost naked with burned <laughs> clothes. They walked in silence with outstretched arms. Burned peeled skin hung from the tips of their fingers. They are like ghosts. Even today, whenever I see barbecued tomatoes, it reminds me of that terrible scene of death. Like tomatoes, human skin peels off easily when burned. I have another strong memory of that time. I was unconscious for a few days. When I woke up, there was a strong smell in the air. It was like burning rotten fish. Even now, I can still smell it. But the smell wasn't fish. It was the smell of, it's a smell of the human bodies being cremated in city parks and the school grounds. Even though, our family had nothing. My mother sheltered many people in our house. One was her cousin, Kenzo Matsuki. He came to our house with a burnt bucket containing the skull of a woman he wishes to bury. The skull belonged to his aunt. His aunt was burned alive in her own house. People around her not to, to do anything because she was trapped badly in the burn, burning house. They themselves had to escape from fire. They begged for her forgiveness while deserting her. <coughs> I also remember a 15-year-old girl who came to our house on her back. She carried her badly burned younger sister. The burned girl survived, but the older girl did not. She had been exposed to massive radiation. My husband's uncle was an English teacher and a devout Christian. He used to paint beautiful pictures and believed in peace. But the bomb killed him. And all his six family members, including his baby. Grieving their loss, my husband adopted his uncle's family name, Tanaka. My husband has now died, but I still carry this last name. In those days, the city of Hiroshima and the surface of the rivers, which ran through the city, were entirely covered by people's bodies. There, are, there were also 12 young American prisoners of war in Hiroshima. They also died from the bomb dropped by their own country. Later, something weird, weird started to happen in Hiroshima. People with no injuries started to die. No one knew them but they had been exposed to massive radiation. Exactly how much radiation the atomic bombs produced is still unknown. Do you know the famous story of Sadako and her paper cranes? Sadako was four years younger than me. 
and we went to the same school. She survived the atomic bomb when she was two years old, but died of leukemia at the age 12. There were many other children, like Sadako. In my case, radiation symptoms started when I was 12. My white blood cell count was abnormal. I suffered constant fever and fatigue and sometimes fainted. I always had mouth ulcers and blotches around my mouth. It was hard to eat. Even today, when I am very tired, I, I have pain, painful sores and can't sleep. I sometimes bleed from my colon. I have had three ribs broken, a knee surgery, and a cataract surgery. The Japanese government decided to certify atomic bomb victims only within uh, two kilometers, 1.24 mile radius of ground zero. Since I lived 300 meters, 328 yards, around beyond this radius. My symptoms are not officially certified as atomic bomb related. Some other victims have tried to sue the government, but instead I decided to spend the rest of my life on my art and testimony. For more than six years after the, the end of the war, the American government hit the radiation damage by blocking the media. In those days, the country was competing against the USSR in its nuclear arms development and wanted to carry out numerous nuclear tests. It was also developing nuclear power generation under the name of peaceful utilization. So the damage caused by radioactivity was uncomfortable truth for the government. So without knowing, citizens drank contaminated water and ate vegetables grown in contaminated grounds. Later, many relatives and friends died from leukemia and other forms of cancer. Those days, Hibakusha also suffered discrimination in Japanese society. In those, those days, Hibakusha women had trouble marrying because their babies often had birth defects. Fortunately, I was able to marry and had a happy family life. My husband did not, mind, seem, did not seem to mind that I was a Hibakusha, but when our first child, Reiko, was born, he was scared. He seriously checked the baby's fingers and toes. Then I realized that he had been worried about the damage of the bomb on our baby. Not just my husband, but all parents those days were worried. Up until now, there still had not been enough research on the impact of radioactivity on the second generation. No doctors can give any legitimate diagnosis. There is no proof that the second generation can maintain their health. The Hibakusha continue to feel sorry for their children and have to, have to carry this psychological burden for their entire life. <coughs> Before the bomb, our family line generally had, had been blessed with good health. However, after the bomb, three of my sister's daughters, who are second generation Hibakusha, were afflicted with thyroid disease. One of them had surgery to remove thyroid cancer at the age of 22. My younger brother, who is also, a second generation Hibakusha had surgery to remove colon cancer when she was still quite young. Doctors say 
there is no evidence to connect these diseases to the atomic bomb. But we Hibakushi have always felt the high possibility of side effects of the bombing. Nobody on this planet should suffer this same tragedy. Since 2007, I have made four round the world voyages on Peace Boat, which is sponsored, uh, which is a Japan based international NGO. I learned more about the situation of the world during these voyages. I have visited more than 80 countries, including ones that are suffering tragic wars and the ones that suffer damage from climate change. I learned that nuclear weapons will lead the Earth to destruction. They are inhumane and should never be allowed on Earth. In 2009, Dr. Catherine Sullivan and Mr. Robert Kuhnquist, who are the founders of NY-based NGO, Youth Art New York's Hibakusha Stories initiative, kindly invited me and gave me the opportunity to share my testimony with the students in high schools and colleagues in New York and Oklahoma. And since I had made 12 visits in seven years with their program, the program has reached more than 50,000 more thousand students and citizens. During that testimony, I sometimes use my enamel artworks. I believe art is a powerful tool for peace education. One day, a junior high school student in New York City who joined the Hibakusha Stories program asked me why I made friends with Americans even though I was nearly killed by the atomic bomb. My answer was this. During the war, Japanese people were taught to believe that all Westerners were demons. In the beginning, it was very hard to forgive them for all the suffering caused by the bomb. But I now believe that hatred only creates a chain of hatred, and it will eventually lead to killings and destruction by war. Humankind needs to make every effort to cut off this chain of hatred and instead have love toward humanity as a whole. In 2010, I started to take part in, in a campaign in which we visited local officials throughout Japan and co collected their signatures agreeing to support the anti-nuclear policy. I also created an art piece for an anti-nuclear art book project. On March 11, 2011, there were a series of incidents at the nuclear power plant, plant in Fukushima, Japan. I felt a strong urge to learn why these things are happening. In 2012, I joined a project to visit the areas damaged, damaged by the Chernobyl nuclear power plant disaster in Ukraine in 1986 and its neighboring country, Belarus. At the Chernobyl plant, the commission work had been going on for nearly 30 years, but they said they might need 40 or 100 more years to finish it. Our government has not learned from either the tragedy on Daigo Fukuryumaru or the Chernobyl disaster. Daigo Fukuryumaru was a tuna fishing boat whose 23 crew members were 
exposed to nuclear fallout or a nuclear test carried out by the U.S. in 1954 at Bikini Atoll. Instead, the Japanese government continues to produce radioactive substances which will create even more victims of radiation. During so, they are also depriving their own citizens of food and a place of live, place to live. We do not know when the disaster in Fukushima will end. There are many people working tirelessly for a nuclear-free world. For instance, ICANN is a gr global campaign to promote the abolishment of nuclear weapons. On July 7th, 2017, the world took the essential st step it needed toward peace. However, none of nuclear states and their allies, including Japan, has has supported the treaty. I urge the leaders of the nu uh, nuclear weapon states and other na uh, nations not to dismiss the TPNW idealistic, but to listen to the voice of people and read the treaty and think about it again. And please think about creating peace, not going to war. Nuclear weapons do not deter war. Russia itself is now proving this point. Last year, in 2022, Russian President Putin stated, started the war in Ukraine, Ukraine and suggesting the use of nuclear weapons for a survivor who knows the inhumane tragedy caused by those weapons. This is totally unacceptable, and I feel strong anger and frustrated that personally could not do anything. Then I received a video message from Ms. Tamara whom I had met 10 years earlier in my, uh, in my visit to Ukraine. She strongly asked me, Ms. Tanaka, as an Evam survivor, you have to keep telling the world about the terrible things that would happen if nuclear weapons were used. Empowered by her message, and with the support of Peace Boat and Hiroshima-based NGO and Hiroshima, I gave a talk on Russian YouTube channel last year. I hope that Hibakusha's voice has reached Russian people. In November last year, my daughter and I were invited to speak at an international conference held at Otago University in New Zealand. I realized, realized how seriously the nuclear issues are in, in, impacting, impacting the southern hemisphere and global south through problems, including nuclear test, testing and nuclear waste. Also, they, they were developed and used by the countries of global north. And that the issues no, no longer cannot be solved only by the global north. We must work together as a global community to solve these problems. During World War II, then U.S. President Harry Truman decided to drop atomic bombs without a second thought. He said it was necessary in order to end the war quickly. But it is believed that the real reason was to send a message to the USSR. 
one of the soldiers who dropped the bombs from the Enola Gay bomber was Jacob Biza. You know what? Clifton Truman, who is a grand grandson of Harry Truman, and Ari Biza, who is a grandson of Jacob Biza, uh, both good friends of mine today. Ari visited me often. We actually met recently and spent a good time together. Both Clifton and Ari are working very hard towards creating world peace. If we were still at war, these good people and I would be enemies. If we have close friends from around the world, we will think twice before starting wars that just seek personal prosperity and supremacy. Empathy is an essential trait for policy makers and citizens alike. In the post, Japan caused the attack on Pearl Harbor and other reckless words on aggression that left tremendous damage, especially on countries in Asia. The Japanese people must reflect on this. When the atomic bombs were dropped, people in Northeast Asia thought, now we are freed. However, the use of nuclear weapons shocked the world by creating a different devastation that changed the concept of war. When I apologized to my Malaysian friend for the Japanese military's atrocious behaviors in the past, he said, I don't expect you to apologize to me now, but I want you to remember what had ha what happened in the past. Let's try our best to prevent another war from happening. He is a person whose grandfather was killed by Japanese soldiers. We as a citizen must not create readers of a country that start a war for, for the sake of uh, ter territorial expansion and better economy. It will lead to an arms race and eventually to the use of nuclear weapons, which will cause horrible devastation and the end of the world. We are the crew members of a ship called Planet Earth. If the crew members fight each other for food and a good place, the ship eventually drifts away and be ship wrecked. wrecked. And none of us will survive. Now is the time for the world to help each other and create peace through diplomacy. To conclude my story, I have one request for you, the young generation. Please choose the path to coexist regardless of your differences, including nationality and race. If in the future there are disputes among the nations, please try to solve them with words instead of wars. Once we start wars, we can only each other as enemies, not as humans, and we kill, kill enemies with ease. Nuclear weapons will lead the Earth to destruction. They are inhumane and should never be allowed on us. I know one day 
we will live in a nuclear free world. And the beautiful blue sky will continue to shine above the heads of our future generation. Thank you for your kind attention. I will be happy to answer your question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much um, to both of you for coming to speak with us. And thank you so much for sharing your story. Um, yeah, I'm very moved by it. Um, and it, it, yeah, it means a lot that you came to speak with us. So thank you. Um, my question is a bit um, departing from um, your story about the nuclear bomb itself, or the atomic bomb, um, and more about, I mean, you're one of the last generation who will remember and who was there for the bombing, um, but you're also one of the last generations who remembers how the city was like before the bombing. Um, and I'm wondering if there's anything that you'd like us to remember or carry about the city before um, the bomb, the city, the people um, that you'd like us to, to carry uh, with us. Thank you. あの、uh, so um, someone once said that um, when they went to Hiroshima that uh, they saw the peace park in the in the middle of the city and they said oh it, it's a good thing that the bomb fell on a park um, without understanding the reality, which was that, in fact, that was the center of the city where ordinary people made their lives. Um, and that was, of course, completely destroyed and changed uh, as a result of the dropping of the bomb. Um, so uh, that person's kind of misunderstanding was suggestive of, um, of the enormity of what happened. で、そこにあの、今ちょうど原爆の記念館があるんですが、そこに私の幼稚園がありました。で、そこを卒業して同じ町の学校に入った同級生全部死にました。So the place where the um the peace memorial now stands in Hiroshima is precisely where her uh, kindergarten was. Um and uh, so she was supposed to graduate from the kindergarten and go to the school. All of her classmates who attended that school died in the bomb. So it was um, a beautiful town. And um, of course, in many ways, there were lots of fun things about the town. Um, but as a result of all of her classmates dying, it also became a place that she never could go again. Thank you. Thank you so much for this inspiring speech. Um, it's very powerful, and uh, I re uh, like sometimes it just almost brings tears to my eyes. And I really appreciate this opportunity. So um, as a, I'm sure the audience um, really get your inner strengths. Um, and that's what I'm thinking, how you can share with the younger generation, you know, under this kind of uh, circumstance, uh, how, what make you to um, stand up in the middle of this darkness, uh, pain, uh, what keep you be, still be so hopeful and strong, uh, re how you build your resilience and uh, inner strength and peace. That's what I want to know. If you can share with uh, our audience, especially younger generation. Thank you so much.
あの私の場合なのですがあの原爆が落ちて町が破壊されたときに青い空が見えたんですねそれで大人はそれを見るあの余裕はありませんだけど子供だったのでやけどが痛いのにあ,あ昨日と同じ空があるまだ明日があるかもしれないと思ったんですねでそのことがずっと私の中にありますそしてものすあのいろんな苦しいことがあの生きているとあったのですがあの84歳になりますからねそれをまた明日があると思ってねそうすると元気が出てあのこれでは終わり、ね、明日があるってねいつも思って今の,あのこう気持ちをねちょっと持ちこたえていますね。Um, so,、uh, after the bomb was dropped、um, and the city was destroyed, she,、uh, as a child, remembers looking up at the sky and seeing that it was this beautiful blue sky. And even though her body was in pain, she and all of the adults were, of course, unable to look at something like the sky. But as a child, she could look up and see the sky and think, oh, it's the same sky as yesterday. If yesterday's sky is here, then tomorrow's sky will be here. There will be a tomorrow.、Um, and having lived for 84 years, you know, she's experienced all sorts of trials and difficult things, but she's always felt that、um, she knows that tomorrow will come. There'll be a better tomorrow.、Um, so I think that's the core of the answer. Like everyone else, I want to say thank you so much for sharing your story.、Um, it was really moving. And my question is that you mentioned how you didn't tell your story until you were 70. And so I wanted to ask, how did you make that decision?、Um, why did it take so long? And then how did you then decide that you wanted to tell the world? あの話しても分かってもらえないと思ってましたねあの本当にひどいあの凄惨な現場は誰にもあの体験しない人には分からないと思って話さなかったし家族にも話せませんでしたねでもあの一番の原因はあの同級生が全部死んでしまったでかあの家族の、ね、中にも死にましたねだからあの思い出したたくなかったんですねでもその話し始めたきっかけは70歳の時にピースボートに乗りましたそして南米に行きましたそうすると南米の,あの国の,あの市長さんが「あなたは生き残ってあのその原爆のことを伝える責任がある」と言ったんですね。で責任があるあ本当にそうだと思ったんですねで責任があるならあの死んだ人は許してくれると思ったんですねそれから70歳それが70歳でしたそしてあの南米のベネズエラで初めてあのテレスールというあの衛星放送がありますそこで初めて話をしました。Um, so when she was younger... Um, her feeling was that、um, even if she talked about what happened, she wouldn't really be able to have, no one would be able to understand who hadn't actually lived through it.、Um, and she also felt that、um, she didn't want to remember the, because all of her classmates had died, she didn't want to have to think about it.、Um, and she felt、um, also that.、Uh, Some kind of discomfort towards the people who had died.、Um, but、uh, so when she was 70, the thing that changed was she went on the peace boat to, to South America, to Venezuela. <laughs> And in Venezuela,、um, a mayor in one of the towns she visited said,、um, as somebody who lived through this, you have an obligation, a responsibility to, to talk about it.、Um, And She decided that、um, if she had a responsibility to speak about it, then perhaps the people who died would be able to forgive her、um, for speaking about it,、um, this horrible thing that had happened to them. So that became the, the catalyst for her decision to,、um, to begin speaking openly about it. And the first time she spoke was in, 
indeed on Venezuelan television. Teresur. Teresur. Teresur, apparently, is the <laughs> TV station in Venezuela. So that was the um, that was the first time she spoke about it. So since then, she's been on four trips on the peace boat and visited many different countries and um, been able to have the opportunity to speak about her experiences uh, all over the world. I'd like to say uh, thank you for the work that you do. It's important. And also, uh, it was delightful to see your art, which uh, challenges the mind, I think, to understand it fully. I didn't know that John Hersey taught at Yale. And for those of you who are two generations younger than I am, uh, I commend his book, Hiroshima, to you. He did uh, the research. He was a journalist also. And he did the research. And the book was published, published I think, in 46 or 47. And it. Uh, doesn't soft pedal, but it's grisly at times to understand what happened. He also wrote a book called A Bell for Adano, which won a Pulitzer Prize and is a happier war story. So maybe read that after you read Hiroshima. あの、ジョンハーシーさんのあの、お孫さんがあの、私の家にあの、来て交流があります。あの、今年来ましたね。あ、去年になりました。もう、あの、仲良くしてますね。はい。あの、キャノンハーシーがあの、お孫さんですね
Um, so for six years after the war, it was um, prohibited to discuss um, what had happened. And then in the 1950s, there was gradually the beginnings of some um, educational efforts uh, around um, the bombings. Um, but recently, there's been yet more change, and partly as a result of the war in Ukraine um, and Russians, Russia's invasion, there's now an effort domestically in Japan to kind of help uh, to encourage ordinary people to, con to open up to the possibility of Japan becoming uh, a nuclear power and arming. Um, and so the, the struggles over these issues continue within Japan um, and have shifted backwards and forwards. But uh, in the current moment, um, various things have happened that are quite concerning, including, for example, um, one of the most uh, important um, post-war comic books uh, is called Barefoot Gen, and it tells the story of what happened in Hiroshima from the perspective of a, a boy and his family. Um, and recently, the, that, the teaching of that book has been um, become very controversial. Uh, so it was used in schools um, in the past, but recently um, in Hiroshima, they've said that they're not going to use it in schools anymore. Um, so these things are domestically in Japan too, always being contested and disputed, and things go backwards and forwards. Um, Whenever there's a change of government, it seems to shift. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for sharing your story. I feel really lucky to be able to hear it. Um, I was lucky enough to visit Hiroshima last month on a study abroad uh, and saw the museum there um, and uh, was saddened and inspired by it in a way that I feel I never could be at any such museum here in the US. So I'm wondering from you, um, what's the best way that we can share your story uh, here in the US uh, with the generations to come? ま、ロシアのあのプーチンのね、あの、ま、戦争で一番難しい時ですね。その原爆をなくするでも被爆者はその時のすっごいあの惨状を見てますので、どんなあのことがあっても戦争で核兵器を使って若い人を殺してはい
um, and particularly following your efforts on the peace boat and other peace building activities. Thank you.ちょっと起こりつつあるっていうね。で、そこを皆さん想像して考えてください。ただ少し領地をあの自分のね、あの国境を広げても全体のね、全部あのさっきの um, so as uh, she mentioned a little bit in her main speech, um, she thinks about um, the world as a, uh, a kind of tiny place in a huge universe, um, but one in which we are all on board together as crew members on this kind of ship. Uh, and if the crew members on, the, on a ship start fighting with each other about who gets the food or who gets the best broom, um, then it's, an inev it's inevitable that the ship will go off course. Um, and when that happens, everyone dies. Uh, so from her point of view, the current moment we're in is a turning point where those possibilities are becoming more and more pronounced. Um, and so she uh, encourages us all to think about that reality. Um, um, Oh, and, and use your imaginations to think about <laughs> things in that way so as to prevent uh, the um, terrible outcomes that are likely to occur otherwise. あの、私はあの、イエール大学の優秀な学生さんたちにね、あの、希望、あの、希望を持ってるんですね。やっぱり次の世界はね。あの、本当にその人を殺し合うだけではなくね。um, so she has very high hopes for all of the brilliant Yale students out there. <laughs> she obviously hasn't met you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, for all of you, she has very high hopes that um, that you will work towards achieving um, a better, more sustainable world, one in which people do indeed speak to each other rather than fighting uh, with each other when there are problems. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, if there's one more question anybody has. Thank you so much, of course, for speaking to us today. Um, of course, uh, like it's important, you realize uh, that it's important that you share this story so that it's not repeated in the world again. Um, but what I wanted to ask was that how, after a life of um, choosing to not speak of this, uh, do you balance and take care of yourself, reliving it so that other people don't have to, while also not sort of traumatizing yourself over and over again and reliving it? So how do you um, make that balance in your head and take care of yourself while also speaking on the story to make sure that other people don't have to go through the same thing again? Thank you. あの、本当 
今度広島であ,あります平和のねその、まあ、メッカと言われているでそれがあの少しでもねそういうあの指導者が戦争ではなく平和の方にちょっとでもねあの端するそういう機会になればと思って話をしてますね。Uh, so she said, it's, it's an extremely good question.、Um, and、um, that it is really hard to talk about these、uh, experiences.、Um, but she says, recently her feelings have started to change, and that、um, she's buoyed by the possibility that by speaking about things, that it may actually lead to some positive change and move the world, even if it's ever so slightly. In the direction of、um, abandoning nuclear weapons. And the,、uh, as I'm sure many of you know, the G7 meeting will be taking place in Hiroshima fairly soon. And she's really hopeful that maybe, just maybe, <laughs> the leaders at that conference will be inspired by their visit to Hiroshima and take some action to address this profound problem. <laughs> 死ぬ人がいいいっぱいいます私の友達もあの結婚がダメになったんですねあの被爆してそしてあの彼女は一生独身で、まあ、85歳になりますそしてあの精神病院に入ってあ死にましただけど一切原爆のことは話さないでそういう人がほとんどですだから私が話す必要があると思ってます。She wants you to know that, um... There are many people who、um, die having experienced what happened in Hiroshima without ever being able to speak about it.、Um, so she has a friend uh, who, uh, whose marriage basically fell apart. She, I mean, it was a, 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 she wasn't able to get married because、um, of the fact that she'd been、um, irradiated.、Uh, and, She remained single for her entire life.、Um, she's now 85, and she、uh, was moved into a psychiatric home、um, and, and died there. Uh, and um, she was never in her entire life able to speak about what had happened to her、uh, during the bombing. So,、um, so because of that,、uh, Tanaka san feels as though she needs to speak. Um, um, so that、uh, people can hear what happened.、Um, please join with me in thanking Tanaka san again for this incredible speech and talk. Oh, I'm sorry, one last question. Hi, thank you for the、um, very、um, inspiring talk.、Um, so I'm going to、um, ask a question on behalf of my daughter.、Um, Um, she would like to know what you were eating during the、uh, time World War II because she has a grandma in, Hiroshima, in Tokyo.、Um, her grandma is originally from Hiroshima, and she has heard a story from her grandma saying that she had a hard time eating during the war and she just had so many struggles. Going through the war period. So,、um, my daughter would like to know what it was like living during that time and eating during that time. あの本当にそれはねあの素晴らしい質問ですね。はい、あのあれですね食べるものがなかったので道の草を食べましたね。そあのそしたらそれは放射能を持ってました。だからたくさん人が死にましたね。そして後であのこうアメリカからねあの食料が届きました。あのそれはあの大豆を油を絞った後のガガスとかねそれでも美味しかったぐらい何もなかったですねだからあの本当に飢えていたのでもうみんな何とかしてお金をねあのお金じゃなくて食べ物を得るために田舎にね行ってあの
そこであの少しね負けてもらうでそれは非常にね難しいことでしたねだからそれで死んだ人が多いです。What a wonderful question. <laughs> she, she said that、um, there really was nothing to eat during the war, and so people were eating the grass from the side of the road. And because the grass from the side of the road was irradiated when the bomb was dropped, lots of people died as a result of ingesting the irradiated weeds on the side of the road.、Um, then after the war,、um, Food started to arrive from America, and、um, that included things like soybeans that had been squeezed of their oil. But even eating that actually tasted wonderful after having had no food for so long. People were truly starving. So、um, it, it's a really wonderful question, and <laughs> thank you for asking. Okay, thank you. Please join with me for a last time in thanking Tanaka san for her wonderful, inspiring talk.